Welcome to the next chapter of our Hopper load cell um, uh, example project. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to change the way we uh, we're going to make the make the project a little bit more complicated so that we can make more interesting graphics. So what we're going to try and do um, is let me repower this. is um, when you pull this uh, load cell hook it it pulls a value onto that onto the, onto the display and as i pull harder it goes higher and higher and then when i release it drops down again so what i want to do is i want to capture the maximum of the pull um while still observing the um current value so we're going to do that first. We're going to make the uh, code slightly more complicated to pull the maximum. And then what I'm going to do is add, add some graphics to that. And then uh, in another chapter, I'm going to make it work on a different display. Um, just to so show that it doesn't matter what hardware you got. So in addition to total grams for our display, um, let's have max grams like that. And what we can do... Um, is we can put um, let's put the gram string in its own string this thing here like uh, string g string so that's just the weight uh, without just the kilograms up to actually we can yeah just the kilograms including the kilograms like that let's just do that so that's the actual weight string like that um and then we're going to write it out to uh the serial port with the word measured in front but we're going to just write the weight out to the screen um and which weight is that? That's going to be, let's put the max grams in there. So this is going to be on the top line, it's going to be the max grams, and it's always going to show the max grams on the top line, right? Um, and then what we can do is recalculate. Hmm. How are we going to do this? We can, on the next line, um, we can recalculate these using the total grams. Total grams is current, I guess. And we'll use total grams. Make a new G string there. Um, do we need to keep going to the serial port? Yeah, we don't need to do that. Let's not put it out to the serial port, make it simpler. And now I can just go to the next line here by going... Um, in fact, if I, just, uh, if I make that a screen print LN, it'll put the next weight on the next line. So I can just do that again. and screen print the weights like that all right and let's put the next line in um if this can take two arguments so it can take like color dot orange and background color color dot black like that so the first line will still be in the default colors um and the second line will be in that and the second line is the current value and the first line is the maximum value okay so let's go s change how this all works in our main function. So outside the loop, we're going to have to keep track of uh, of the max value. So long max grams equals zero. Now I actually want this to be greater than or equal to 50. So uh, like not 40, to make it 50 grams. So if it's greater than or equal to 50 grams, it's a valid reading, not just noise. And then we can say if grams is greater than max grams, 
then uh, max grams equals grams. Right? And now, what did I say? We're going to the arguments were max grams first, I think. Yes, max grams, then total grams. And total grams is actually current grams. I should have actually called it current or something like that. Let's rename it to current. Current grams. So the current, what I'm current, the current pressure on the device and the maximum we've hit. Okay, so there we go. That should do it. And it's not ideal, um, but we're going to improve on it. So let's build that. Really need to get this display better. I'll improve the display so that it can, so that you can see what's happening on the screen. Let me do that quickly. I'll pause the video. Uh, we've got a typo, so double click on it. Semicolon over here. Another semicolon over there. Okay, let's run that. So now on that display, I've now got two lines, um, but I'm going to pause the video and just focus on the display now so that you can see what that's what it's doing. All right, now, now you can see the screen better. So um, if I hit the button, let's reset. So it resets that. And now if I pull, um, as I pull, pressure on it, the top number gets bigger and bigger, but you can see it didn't reset. Let's see if I can go above. There we go. And then if I release, that's where we end up. But um, what we really want to do is we want to reset every time because now when I start again, I've, I've got a, I, you know, that maximum hasn't changed. It's just showing me the current reading in the back one. Yeah. And it's also updating pretty slowly, this flashing here. So we want to see if we can get that a bit faster too. So um, let's see what we can do about that. So what we can do is on, on the last pull, um, we can just keep the green one and drop the other one. So how do we know when we've got to the last pull? So we can just go bull last here and then go, if it's not the last pull, um, then we're going to print the second line, the orange line. So if it's not the last pull, we're going to put the second line out as well. So how do we know it was the last pull? Tricky, tricky. So if we're doing readings in here, that's definitely not the last pull. Um, so let's see what that looks like. Um, yeah, so if we're actually capturing a reading here, it's not the last pull. But the last pull would be um, what happens after, it, you know, if we read a low value again, we we'll read below uh, 50. So if we put an else in here, right, now it's the last pull. So now we can display the last pull like that. And this will clear the screen and only to play, display the top one. And at the same time, um, we can put in a, let's not delay if we've got a good reading. So we should put that in an else, only delay if there was no reading. But that means we really should delay if, we, if we're not reading anymore. So we can put a shorter delay in here. And this will make it less flickery. This should make it faster. Right? Um, it's only going to ever get to this one if the device wasn't ready. So if the HX711 not ready, it'll get here. Um, but yeah, I think it's a good idea to delay over here. But, and, and we're going to want to reset um, max grams here equals zero. Problem with that, though, is that if you're not pulling anymore and you come around here and reset max zero, it's going to immediately come around again and set that again. So you need to have a way of only going into that once. So let's make a Boolean called uh, new reading. And by default, we're in a new reading like that. 
And as soon as we get our first reading, we're no longer in a new reading, we just say false. So if we were reading and then we arrive with no more pulls in here, that means that new reading will be false. So if not new reading, that means it's the first non-pull. We want to display that and reset the grams to zero. And we'll set that to true again so that it doesn't come into this if a second time. I think that should do it. Um, so let's try that. Uh, let's, uh, where, where are we? Compile that. So now the orange should only be while we're pulling, and then when it disappears, we're going to see a max. And then if we start a new pull, it's going to reset the max. Let's try this. So we're going to, whenever you do a pull on the on the scale, you're going to you're going to see your current set. You're going to see your um, current weight, and then you're going to see um, afterwards the max. So we, there we go. And now I start to pull. Uh, it is flickering my orange like that, but you see all this flicker. Pretty disturbing, isn't it? Pretty disturbing. And why is that? Okay. Well, it's a good time to talk about the differences between the screens. So we've got this um, uh, this 160 by 128 TFT screen. So if I get out my calculator here and I go um, 160 by 128. And it's an RGB screen that's got about, they do RGB in uh, two bytes. So it's five bits of red, five bits of uh, blue, and six bits of green is the way it's configured. But so there's two bytes um, per, per pixel. So the total amount of memory being transferred via serial onto this device um, to, to update, for example, to clear the screen is 40K, 4-0. Um, so that's why um, every single time I'm drawing something, it's flickering like that. Um, so I can make it slightly faster um, by doing the following. So at the start of my draw function here, I can put a I can put a display suspend. And as I mentioned in the previous video, these devices are write only. There's no you can't read the values in the buffer to see what's already on the display. So it means if you're drawing to the display, you need to update the entire display. Uh, so, and display resume. So let's see what that does for our flickering. So what that means is it'll say, don't draw directly to the display, just draw to the buffer for all this stuff. And then at the end here, update the screen. So let's see if that makes it less flickery. So it does all the drawing locally um, on the microcontroller in the buffer. And then this resume dumps the entire buffer. Okay, so let's see what that does for us. Do we still get that nasty flickering where we can't even read what's on the screen? So, yes, we do. We still get this horrible flickering, right? Okay, so how can we overcome this? Um, now, I've been through this a bit because while I was doing this, I actually first implemented the uh, project on this uh, OLED display, which is a lower resolution. So the OLED display, let's do the math on that one. So it was 40 kilobytes of data being transferred in every one of those flickers. So let's say 128 times 64, which is the OLED display, right? But the OLED display is monochrome, which means it's got one bit per pixel. So I, instead of multiplying, I divide by eight. And for the OLED display, um, there's less than a K of data transfer on every, um, every time we update the screen. So 1 40th of the amount of uh, content being tr uh, transferred every time. Um, so the, the basic premise here is wrong of do, the screen clear means I'm updating all the data on the entire screen. I'm transferring all the data on the entire screen. So I'm wiping it out. Whereas I only really need to transfer the data of what I've changed. Right? So if I can get rid of the screen clear here, um, it should make it faster, but there's going to be an obvious thing that goes wrong when I when I do the screen clear away like that, right?
So let's build it and run it again. I'm just going to control F5 since we're not running in the debugger. We can just run from the console. Um, okay, so let's see what happens. Upload the program, running the program. So now let's see what happens. Ah, lots of things happen differently. So it goes down the screen because it's doing without... The, we were relying on the clear screen to set the um, coordinates. So now we need to set the coordinates manually here of these two prints. So we don't run down the screen like that. So how would we set them manually, right? Um, we'd go, uh, there's a screen cursor X and a screen cursor Y. And we could set them to zero, zero, like that. And then for the next one, we can set them to um, zero, one. So one row down, let's try that. Okay, let's run that again. See how we're doing. And that is much better. But what you can see there is it didn't wipe out my uh, TAR reading. So when it draws a blank character, it wipes out what's behind it. Um, but my TAR reading was was wider, so I can make I can make it smaller. I can make my TAR uh, text smaller so that it doesn't so it'll automatically overlap it. So I don't really need to say what the value was. I can just do something like say you know tar set like that or i can leave it going to the serial port and over here i can just set our set like that so that'll wipe out that um but another thing's going to go wrong and that's if i get to two digits like if i go over 10 kgs uh, i mean if i go over nine kgs don't even know if i can but i can try that um, it'll also still go wrong. So let's see what that looks like. Oh, it's a 10 kg device. I wonder if it'll even work. Let's run that. We reset, then we start pulling. Let's see if I can get it over 10 kgs. There we go, 11. So you can see what goes wrong there is when it drops back, we lose a character there. So um, it, you know, if it gets an extra digit there. So how do we how do we solve that quickly? So at this point, I'm going to do a little bit more data abstraction. So I'm going to go back to my um, hardware file, and I'm going to make it so that um, when we want to configure for different displays, we're going to want to set these things to different values. So const, we're going to make a text left, which is, and this is going to allow us to center it. So we're going to say on the screen, yeah, five sounds about right. We can just take a guess at it. And this needs to be also a byte or a UN, but a byte's fine. And then we're going to say, this is going to be so that we can wipe out that extra G. We're going to say text width. And we're going to say our text width is 10 wide like that. Now, these are lowercase constants, so they're private. So we need to have um, public properties. So uh, we can make a public one with an uppercase first character. Text left, it's got a getter so that you can read the public property. We don't ever need to set it. And we'll go text left like that. That's how you make a property in Hopper. And we'll do the same with text width. So now we can go back and how would we use that? Okay, so when we're calculating this weight thing here, um, this weight equals G string um, or screen print weight here, um, we can put some padding on the left. So that means the decimal point will always light up, light up. So we can put your dot left pad 
and pad it with spaces on the left and we're going to pad it with um hardware text width so it's always going to be 10 wide and we could do the same in the in this one down here and then instead of cursor x being zero we're going to call it hardware text left like that okay let's see if that sorts out our extra g if we pull over um, 9 kgs, if it, it gets rid of our little um, noise there, and it should also center them now. Let's see if that looks any prettier. Okay, let's uh, launch the debugger. And I'm when I'm running in the debugger right now, I'm not running the debugger. I'm using Control F5 so that I get full speed because I'm testing performance. So why would I want to run in the debugger? Okay, let's try pulling our device again. And it's kind of awkward in front of the camera, but let's pull that and see if I can get it over. There we go, 10 kgs. And then we drop it again. But it looks, I made a mistake in not moving the um, TARE uh, set over into the middle, so it will get wiped out by the when, on the first time I draw. So that's easy to fix. So I just need to put that in front of the um just set it to that position before i print it like uh that all right okay uh, we'll build that and run that one more time so f5 and then control f5 and yes it's wiping out the tare message now and it's aligning nicely okay and it's pretty quick. Um, so this is sort of usable speed. So keeping in mind, I've overclocked the CPU. Let's go over 10. And we get rid of our decimal. And when we put it down and drop it, it should... Why is it... Oh, oh it's not wiping out on the final one because it doesn't clear the screen. So I guess we have one more thing to add. Um, and that is... If we're not on the last, if we are on the last one, that's this one. So I should actually, I prefer positive conditions. So let's do that the other way around. So if we're on the last one, which only gets called once. Um, then we're going to want to wipe out that. Um, so we're going to want weight to be, so I guess we can do that. That'll probably work. And so we, we put, if you put um, something in an expression, then you can put a dot behind it and run a method that works on those expressions. So left pad is a string method, and it'll run on string type expressions. So um, putting the parentheses around it makes it into an expression rather than just an identifier, um, because the identifier would get optimized by the compiler, whereas the expression would get executed at runtime. And then it, it should pad that. So now if we run that, um, when we pull, when we release, we should see the orange disappear now. No, it doesn't. What am I doing wrong? I'm supposed to be writing spaces over it. Oh, let me pause and see what I've got wrong. I see what I did wrong. I didn't um, set the cursor X, Y. So what it's doing is just drawing the spaces after here instead of on the next line. So what I should have done was just move that out like that. So let's run it again quickly. And then we're going to wrap this up. And then the next chapter, I'll go into graphics and we'll have some uh, lines moving up and down. So uh, while I'm on the subject, um, this is one of the benefits of um, this OLED display. And it's a, it's a funny benefit. It's it, it's a benefit because the OLED display has less features. In other words, it's monochrome and it has less pixels. It's only got one K verse, verse of data to transfer on every time you want to update the entire screen. So um, in this case, I'm not updating the entire screen. I'm only updating. Uh, actually, let's just run that the same way we did last time. I'm only updating what's changing. Um, so because I'm not clearing the screen, I'm not updating all the pixels. So I'm having to do that to get it to work at some reasonable speed. Whereas with the OLED display, I don't have to go to that trouble. I can just update 1K on each on each pass and it's, it's very, very fast. So the simpler display has the advantage of speed anyway. So when I release, 
the orange disappears now. So as I pull, we're building it up, and as I release the see the that's the current setting and our maximums up there. Let's see if I can pull the maximum up to seven. And as, as I release, it goes away. There we go. So that's enough on how to uh, optimize your display output, draw a bit of text, and we've now got it calibrating a max. And then I'm going to do uh, one more chapter where I'm going to show you how to uh, uh, do this with graphics. And then I'll do a final chapter where I'll get it working on the other hardware so that you can see what, I, what, what, what the point was of the hardware abstraction. So thank you for watching.